Hello, welcome back. I um, hope you uh, enjoyed the mini series, the six part mini series. Um, if you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, look out for more of the same. Uh, in the previous six videos, we covered uh, quite a lot of ground, lots of nuts and bolts of uh, exactly what to do and how to do things. Um, some real actionable stuff. I've got messages um, you know, on, on YouTube and, and uh, you know, on, on the email address as well. People taking the steps and actually making a real difference. Uh, also, my team are working with some people who you know, only this week we brought th three new landlords on with you know, a couple of properties, five properties, and one with uh, 20 on. Hello, welcome. Um, so yeah, th th things are working and um, you, you're getting the, the use of it. That's fantastic. Uh, I promised six parts. So this is a previously unadvertised seventh part. Uh, I think it's need needed because um, I kind of felt like I needed a bit of a summary. Um, I couldn't quite put my finger on it at first as to um, what it was that was missing. Um, and then I was trying to figure out but what I put in there wasn't enough. Um, there's the differences that are going to make a difference that I either hadn't included or hadn't highlighted. Uh, and I also remember, I've, I've called this the the Happy Landlord series, which is a bit of a clunky title, but it's genuine. I, I think this is what you need to know or do or be, all those things, to be a, a happy landlord. And uh, you know, all the nuts and bolts are there. I believe they are right. Um, I know from experience they're right. Um, but there was something missing. So I've got all my thoughts written down. I put them in bullet points, you know, uh, and it was kind of the stuff that was left over. And then when I looked at it, it's, it's, there, was, there was some bits and some gaps to pull in. So I've run through the bullet points and um, they are they are related, but pretty random. You know, I'm just going to go through them. And these are my thoughts as to the differences that will make the difference. You know, if you go through the six part mini series, you'll get some really good stuff out of that. Go back, have a look through them. And I'm sure they will make a difference. I can see they're making a difference already to some people. These are the differences that will make a difference, the things that need highlighting, the gaps that need filling in. So um, this was probably, when writing it down, it's kind of my list of frustrations as well. You know, I get landlords and people who say, you oh, know, that's frustrating. Oh, so, oh, that, that's interesting. And, and they go off and do it their own way. And they don't get the better, best out of it. You know, of course, it, 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 I'm, I'm not saying I'm always right. Um, there's very little, few areas in, in life where I'd sort of presume to be, uh, um, uh, you know, qualified to speak up. But these are ones where I've made this mistakes myself. And I really do, I've, you know, I, I've gone, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if that's really that important and carried on my own way. And uh, I was wrong. And I don't mind admitting I was wrong now. And I suppose it's, it's my responsibility, to, it's my duty to, to uh, say, you know, th th these are things I think you genuinely can do better. It's the bits that maybe you, uh, they're not, not, so, um, not so obvious. I think the first one, so the first one is in search for, for, for landlord happiness, I think there's got to be an, an element of, um, it's, it's what, what we describe in the business, and I'm sort of coined the phrase, I guess, a good landlord attitude. This is a business, it's entrepreneurial, you're going to take risks, and there's some bumps along the road. Um, and the bumps aren't things, if you're going to get really het up about each one of those bumps, it's going to be a frustrating experience. Um, yeah, every little bit of la yeah, we, we, we're very hot on you know the cap keep, 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 key performance indicators, KPIs, running a, a tight ship and running running things hard, running things hot, and um, you know still then there's going to be things that don't go right, and you've got to kind of got to let that wash over you because it's part of the business. It, it's not a problem. It is just part of the business. You know, um, maintenance issues will come in. Um, it's up to you to deal with them in a seamless way. You can't get bothered about the fact that they actually happened. You can get bothered about the fact that they're taking too long to get dealt with those kind of things but it's all about knocking the edges off and making things spin spin nicely so um we call that having a good landlord attitude and we gen generally think that you know, p things run smoothly if you think i'm a landlord i'm going to be a good landlord i'm going to run things well but i am in the business of being landlord second bullet point that i got down here was so if you're a landlord already you've got property already rented out um i i know that the the gap from where you are now to where you could be is almost certainly bigger than you realize. Um, and when I say the gap, I mean, you've got um, where, where you are now is probably not as good as you thought it is. You know, actually some gaps in um, the figures. I'll come on to that in a minute, but you know, you think you know, you're kind of kidding yourself. The fact that, you know, I've, I've got the places all rented out. There's, there's no arrears. Well, actually there was quite a big void there. And I know that guy didn't pay his rent. Like, two and a half years ago, but it was, only, it was only six weeks, wasn't it? And you, but when you add it all up, actually, you're down here somewhere. 
Um, different, different for different people, but you know, actually, it, it, it's off, you know. And then when I'm saying the gap is bigger, that's one bit of it. But then the other bit, and you don't know what you don't know, as, as they say, you can be that much better. And you know, with the right people behind you, the right knowledge, the right training, the right training is probably the wrong word. You know, the right support. You know, um, knowledge and support. You can get more out of Vitalet, and somewhere in there, probably about that much of that, you know, is the profit, is the cream. Um, so if you're only getting that, that's where this Vitalet isn't profitable. It doesn't work. Is coming from and um, probably isn't at that you need to know that actually you're there and you need to bring it up there and you can be there and there's the profit you know so buy to let does work but you have got to do the majority of everything right to get it to work so um the gap's bigger that was uh, that was one of the bullet points i got so you know think about that yeah it, 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 you don't know what you don't know it's, it's in the darkness somewhere out there if the gap's bigger it's, oh, what the heck does he mean only when you know do you go, oh, I see. And there's my extra 75, 300 pound, whatever, profit per month times all the properties I own. So it's like, yeah, that, that is a big deal. Um, next big thing, and there's probably, well, there's about four or five bullet points on this one, is DIY, uh, two things. It's not scalable and it does not save you money. Um, I put them on the same bullet point because they, they're, they're very, very linked, they're close. But of course, I think the, the saving money bit is the key driver and then it all wraps up in this all-consuming kind of mess of work and grind and unhappiness if you get it wrong um at, at the worst at the, at, the, at the best you still not save yourself money you know um i think i've got to be really really clear on this because doing it yourself is not as profitable profitable as getting help getting getting a letting agency probably in a large part and it's not scalable I see far too many landlords struggling through, muddling through, DIYing at least some element of it. Um, they don't really know how to do it, even if they think they do. Um, they're trying to fit it in amongst, even if they do know how to do it, absolutely know how to do it, but they're trying to fit it in amongst all the other things they're doing, you know, whatever it's family life or, you know, being a solicitor or a doctor or whatever, you know, whatever, you know, but too pretty stereotypical. Um, um, uh, landlord occupations they're not not all landlords are solicitors or doctors although it does seem actually almost half of you are IT consultants but that's a, a little bit uh, anecdotal tongue in cheek there but you know what I mean busy lives everybody's got busy lives and you're trying to fit stuff in and even if you're totally competent to do it um, if, you, if you just can't do it you don't do it for another two weeks that's two weeks it's rent probably lost or two weeks of annoyed tenant that then refuses to pay their rent or whatever it is um, so is, there's also all the stuff in the back of your mind where you're thinking, have I done that right? It seems okay at the moment, but is it going to come and explode in my face in you know, two weeks' time, two months' time, two years' time? You know, whatever that is. So there are hundreds and hundreds of jobs in the life of being a landlord, and trying to do them all is just, it's not possible, not possible to do them well, and it's not scalable. You know, It's all very well trying to do that on one house or two houses or three houses, but try and do it on 5, 10, 15, 20. And you do need to be at those numbers. You know, throughout that mini, mini series, we were talking about, you know, I want you to think in 5s, 10s, 15s, 20s. And that's not because it's greedy, you know, I'm trying to, you know not, not greed that does that. It, that's a business. You know, one or two houses isn't going to change your life that dr dramatically. But those serious numbers are. And whenever we um, ask a landlord, what it is that they want out of a buy to let property portfolio, the answers are pretty damn serious, you know early retirement, uh, career choices, pension, um, income supplement because, you know, kids' education or you know, family holiday. Well, yeah, serious stuff needs serious answers. And uh, one or two houses probably isn't approaching it seriously enough and it's not going to make the serious income to address those serious life choices, you know? So I'm, I'm waffling a little bit now. I'm wondering. I need to get right back to the point, which is getting a letting agency involved is going to make you more money. Because you're still in the back of your mind, I can hear saying, yeah, yeah, but for the next um, you know, few properties, three or four, I'll just look after them myself, because I'll probably, I'll make more money, and that is actually going to get me to one of those serious goals quicker. I'll, I'll get a letting agent involved, you know, when, at that point. Landlords forget regularly um, that there are, there are do it DIY, there's already costs, you know. You're probably going to have to get, even if you go to all the self-service websites in the world, they'll still charge you something. You'll probably use a letting agency that, um, uh, charges you a let-only fee. 
calculate the gap between the standard let only fee and whatever other fees you pay that you know you haven't got a letting agency involved but you've still got costs and what a fully managed cost is you'll be surprised it will be hundreds of pounds not thousands a year and then you start to think well okay i've quantified what the extra bit is for a letting agency what's the what's the, what are the what's the extra that they get me um you know i haven't really got any arrears and the voids are okay and you start thinking actually last time there was a tenant turn I got a decorator's quote and I thought it was a bit expensive and uh, I went and decorated it myself and I said I thought it would only take two weekends but I actually ended up taking four and that's a month and then I put it on that website to get the tenants in and I couldn't do that viewing because I was away on holiday and all of a sudden before you know it um, you're uh, you know, six eight weeks away from that's two months rent um, and that's significant it, it, you, you haven't really saved yourself anything um, decorating the flat and yeah, you know, we we have the other thing there would be is you know, maintenance contractors. You know, um, DIY on the maintenance is going to cost you that time, which will cost you the rent. Um, but then you think, well, all, always in the back of the landlord's mind is you know, the maintenance will start to cost more if I use a letting agency. Complete, not true. We will have access to the cheapest and most effective and quickest and easiest and you know competent insured all those things contractors and it will be cheaper than any other contractor that you can get involved um it won't be as cheap as you but then again if you are that you know, it consultant doctor whatever your hourly rate is more than the decorator so you really shouldn't be doing that thing anyway plus by extending it you're losing the rent and then that's you know all those sorts of things take a good hard look at your accounts and you will see getting a letting agency involved will save you money absolutely bottom line it will be there then you will also have in the back of your mind a, well, a clear back of your mind there'll be none of that worry none of that have i done everything right is the paperwork right i don't really understand that legislation i hope i registered that thing right i hope i did yeah, all those things that keep needing flagging up throughout the tenancy as well they're taken care of you know money hassle the final thing time so you got more money you got less hassle in the back of your mind those things can't come out of the woodwork and explode and then you get your time back which is exactly what you want and what you need um all those serious things we're talking about you know retiring early or time with the kids or you know pension but all, all those things they require time but also because you might say well i don't need the time now i'm not sailing off into the sunset also you're going to need the time now to scale your property portfolio whether with help or not scaling a property portfolio is 10 times as hard as managing one you know that's that kind of a bit anecdotal but you know looking after 200 properties versus buying two properties you know it's um it's about that so that'll be very very busy looking after the uh, sorry growing the property portfolio is going to take a lot 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 more time okay so uh, I think I've got through those five or six bullet points there. Where, 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 where we got to? Yeah, I've got through. I've got through to this almost second to last page. So um, I guess the key point there is you've got to find the right letting agency, haven't you? And, and, and that is a struggle for for, for most landlords. Um, you, know, you might have listened to all that, and you probably twigged I own a letting agency, and uh, you think, oh, good job. I can understand why you're saying you should use a letting agency. <laughs> he owns a letting agency. Um, you've got to understand that I don't own a letting agency through choice, really. It's kind of by default. Um, I know that I need all those things. I've tried to do all that stuff myself. Um, and I came up with all those problems that I've just talked about. And it worked okay, but it was nowhere near as good as it is now. I needed a system, a process, something to put around the business that I wanted to build, the property empire. Um, to look after it in the way that I know it needs to be looked after to make it profitable. There was only one way to do it, and that was uh, start the company for the landlords.com. So um, finding the right letting agency, I believe you found them now. Um, book onto a discovery day, you'll find a link in the description. Come out, come and find out a, a bit more about us. Um, we will help you grow a property portfolio, whether you've bought houses already whether you've got one house 10 houses or 100 houses already we'll manage those in the way we've described today in that mini series and all, all sorts of other things to bring in there as well um, and we will also help you buy your next houses if that's something that you want to do if that's your ambition you know if you've already got 100 houses and you want no more at all 
will manage the 100 really, really well. If you've got 100 houses and you want another 100, we'll help you with that as well. So um, one final last little bullet point here. Um, you need access to a group, a wider group of property professionals. And um, this is the bit where, you know, as a business, we know what we like to keep in touch with our landlords. You know, obviously, more than that, we know to formally systemize a annual review with landlords. Come in, sit down, talk. And we've got some bullet points we go through. And I've just got a couple of sort of anecdotal things in the back of my mind um, where you know, landlord, we meet them, we're talking to them. And we know what the plan is. You know, we've asked. We've pre, you know, this is this is what we're trying to do, isn't it? You know, pre-agreed, and um, yeah, it's 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 two-way, but it's the landlord's plan. We're not we, we're not particularly driving it in any way. We're just helping, facilitating, uh, being an agent, those kind of things on on the back end. But we can notice that you know, that landlord wanted to buy more houses, and they're not. Why? And uh, two two that sort of stuck out would be. Um, uh, the, the, the numbers didn't quite work out the right way, and um, not not quite know what, what what's going on with the with, with, with the cash flow. That that would be yeah. And uh, something that came to light was you paid too much tax. I mean, we're not a tax advisors, and I'm not an accountant, but you know we have this conversation with lots of the landlords. You know, I can't tell you specific; it's all confidential, obviously. But um, that doesn't feel right. You need to go speak to X and Y and see what happens, and come back to us and let us know. And uh, that wider team, that introduction. You know, the, the fact that we're in that chair and we're seeing all these things going on meant that that landlord went away, got some good advice, came back and said, you're absolutely right. And now I've got £40,000 a year more in my pot and we're going to buy some more houses. Good for him, good for us. Um, so things like that. And, and, and another one was a, a refinancing problem. You know, structure, company structures are getting more and more um, common, but also slightly more complicated, you know, with the... Uh, you know, different ownership structures, corporate ownership of, a, of another one, debentures, all sorts of things. And, um, you know, again, we're not accountants, um, but I, I've, got, I've got pretty good working knowledge of all this stuff now, having to have to spoke, spoke to you know, my own accountant, other accountants, um, clients, and seeing what their problems are. And, you know, uh, a problem where I can't get this refinanced because of these reasons, you know, that's just, you know, the, the, the number of lenders is really narrow because I've got myself in this position and that's owned by that and that hasn't got that enough profit, but it will never have because that's the way I want it. Um, yeah, you need to speak to that accountant and that mortgage broker because other client over here had exactly the same problem and um, they sorted it out away. So the wider team of people, um, fullerlandlords.com introduces you to that wider team of people. I think yeah, you can do everything right. But if you get down to that bottom bit, sometimes you just get stuck and then it's really hard to get over that. We're not accountants, solicitors, mortgage brokers, party wall surveyors, uh, you know, all those other things. But we know them in the business. We've used them. We can point you in the right direction and say in the, the similar circumstance that we saw, that person got that person over this, this hurdle. Go, go speak to them. And yeah, 99% of the time it works and you move forward. So you... With ForTheLandlords.com, you're joining a wider club of successful landlords. And uh, I think that's really important too. So there you are, a little bonus bit, uh, the seventh part of a six-part mini-series. Uh, if you think that you could benefit from that kind of management, or if you'd like help growing your property empire, you know, we have a business that will find, fix and rent a property for you. You know, you we call it handhold because you're very minimally involved. It's your house, you, you own it. You, you are the landlord, but we'll help you and do all the heavy lifting for that. Or we'll take an existing portfolio and we'll optimize it and get it really singing and dancing so that you're making the maximum amount of profits. Don't worry, the fees that we charge will be more than covered by the benefits that we, we delivered. Um, uh, if, or we do both of those things. Uh, the descriptions, uh, sorry, the uh, the links are in the description, the video description. You can click in there and you can get in touch with us. There's phone numbers, there's email addresses. It'll take you to the website as well. So hopefully that was useful. And uh, hopefully I might see some of you soon on a, on a discovery call. Bye for now.